Hi everybody, this is Harmony with Cornerstone Stitchery and welcome back to the channel. Uh, here I talk about my crafting journey which usually revolves around cross stitch but have I have some knitting and crochet thrown in sometimes. Um, this, this video will be all about a, a Prairie Schooler September. So um, thank you to everyone who has recently subscribed and watched and commented. I appreciate you all taking time out of your busy schedules to watch my videos when I know that there's so many other videos that you could be watching. I truly appreciate it. So if you watched my last video, then you will already know. But if you haven't watched my last video, I am here to tell you that in September, I have dedicated my stitching time um, to only do Prairie Schooler charts. I had four started and planned to start 15. I didn't coffee tea dye enough fabric, so I only started 14. That other one will just get started some other time. So, um, the plan was to stitch 500 stitches on each project and just continue to move through them. And then if I got down to the bottom of the list, then I would just start over at the top. So it's been today's seven, uh, September 17th. So it's been 17 days since I started this journey with Prairie Schooler. So let's see how far I've gotten. I do have my iPad here with the stitch counts. I've been taking notes. Um, so let's go ahead and get started let me let me prop this up so that way i can there we go we'll just set it down so first up on the list was country seasons country seasons this is book 123 i decided because of the um so let me let me go backwards a little bit when i kit things up um it's great if I have all of the flosses, but generally I'm only concerned about having the floss colors for the section that I'm going to start with. I start in the bottom right hand corner um, and for this endeavor this month, I only had enough floss to start on winter. And I started in the bottom right hand corner and the first go round, the first time I stitched on it, I got 512 stitches. The second time I stitched on it, I got 530. All of these projects, um, all of the Prairie Schooler projects that you'll see today are stitched on 28 Count Monaco. Some of them are off-white, some of them are ivory, some of them are white, and some of them are coffee tea dyed, but all of them are 28 Count Monaco. So after what, 551 stitches? No, 1,051 stitches, sorry can't add. I stitch on it 512 stitches and 539 stitches to get a total of 1051. If I can do quick math in my head. So the, there's a couple of different sections of these um, country seasons. There's the bottom that says the, the season, then there's the middle, and then there's a top part upside down. No, there is not a top part. But basically, from the, the top of the season to the bottom of the house is full coverage because of the snow. So you'll see that on the winter. I know these pictures are really small, um, but it is full coverage. So I what I did is I did a little bit of the white to get started on something else. And then I put that in and then I'll go back and do some of the white around it. I do generally try to do the white stitching first, but there's just so much of it. So I'm doing like the bottom part of the deer, then putting the deer in and then I'll put the top, the snow above the deer, you know. And all of these are using the called for flosses, um, except for a lot of the Prairie Schooler um, Halloweens. I am subbing out 310 for the 3371. Okay, and I do have a bin here. I'm going to put them back. Okay, project number two was January. I stitched on this twice as well. The first time 503 stitches and then 504 stitches. I already have the little ornament done and now I'm working on the medium size. The medium size here in January. And almost a completion. I have to finish the house. I found that I did not have the color for some reason. I thought this project was fully kitted. I have to finish 
one tree and some snowflakes and then there's one more kid on a sled and then I'm done and then I can move on to the big piece they don't take that long um but when you you have some stitches for the hat and then you have some stitches for the coat and you have some stitches for the scarf and then some stitches for the boot and the slide you know it, it there's a a lot of color changes um so it can take a little bit longer to get through your 500 stitches then sorry this this project bag is just a little bit too narrow i think to put that chart in there i got this from a stitching friend okay Project number three is Pumpkin Patch. Some of these I do have in sheet protectors because they're not the cardstock. Pumpkin Patch. And this one, I got 520 stitches the first time and 508 stitches the second time. So how I'm going about this one is I put in the, I put in, Usually when my projects have a border, I will go straight up on the right hand side and then I will go along the bottom to create like a right angle. And then that way I have a point of reference and a little bit to go on. So I did, I think this is the full width. Yes, this is the full width. It was easy to count because I just had to know like how many orange squares I needed or how many brown squares I needed. And so then I knew I was done. And then what I did is I came over here and I started on the pumpkins and the vines. And then once I got through the pumpkin and the vines enough where I knew I could put in one strand of the 898, then I put in one strand. And then I continued on with the pumpkins and the vine and then more brown, pumpkins and vine, more brown. So that's the way I was going about that. And that way it didn't seem overwhelming because it's full coverage. That section is full coverage all the way to the right hand side because it's the pumpkin patch. And then on top of it, you have the house. So that house is a pretty good size too. Okay, so that's pretty good progress with a uh, pumpkin patch. 1,028 stitches in two sessions. And some of these, I was actually getting done in a, in a day. I can, you, I've been doing pretty good Sorry, this is a lot of stuff. The, the floss is falling out and the sheet protector and the, but some some days, um, like weekdays, I was uh, finishing up the one I was working on the night before. Then I would get a whole nother 500 stitches on another project and then I would start on a third project. So that kind of went for several days. Last week, I kind of petered out just because um, I was really tired last week. So it took me like three days to get one project done. Okay, this one is Trick or Treat. I got 502 stitches done and then 529 stitches done. Uh, so what's that, 1,031? I started with the small, like the little house. Started there. I finished this last night, my second um, session with it. And I did notice that I messed up a little bit here we are what I did is I started I started with the tree and put some of the tree in and then I started to do the porch railings and I screwed up on the porch railings so it's one stitch too wide so which basically means I put in an extra 10 stitches that um I think I log ended up logging them I have a, a fuzz fuzz I do think that I logged them down because they are stitches that I put in even though they weren't, you know, on the chart. So, I mean, that's that's fine. But this one is almost done. I just have to finish filling in the two windows, the one with the witch and then the one above and the lamp post or, or the, is that what it's called? The, the, the porch light, porch light. Um, and then the details, the finishing details on the tree and all three pumpkins. Everything else on this one is finished. And um, I don't know who cut this fabric. I may have said that once or twice before along over the years. I don't know who cut this fabric because I have all these pieces of fabric. Like this one is for, I would assume that this is for the big one. 
the big piece. Maybe with not very much margin, I, I'm, mm, mm. And then there's these two pieces for two smalls. And as you can see, I'm using less than 50% of this one because it's folded in half. So I'll do the other small on this side and then put this piece back in my stash because I have more prairie schoolers to work. Well, I don't currently have any except for the one that needs coffee tea dyed fabric, but I'm sure that I will. So that was project number four. And number four. Yeah, I'm putting all of the paper ones in sheet protectors just so that way um, I can tr try to keep them as nice as possible. Okay, this is the one that I'm currently working on. Um, project number five. Um, first session, I got 505 stitches. Second session, I'm currently at 186, and I will work on it until I have 500. The reason why, you know, they're 500 and some odd stitches, I'm just finishing what I have on my needle, the thread I have on my needle. I'm not just pulling my needle out and saying, oh, 500 on the nose. So whatever I have. So this one is Cats, Bats, and Witches. I started with the big piece, um, just like I predicted in my last video, and I started in the bottom right. So I'm working on the houses. I put a little bit of the tree in because it was there. And here we are. So again, with this one, I did the border up the up on the right side, and then I did some border along the bottom, and then I started in with the houses. And then it gives, it gives a point of reference, like on this one, it's one orange, one black, one orange, one black, all the way across. And so I put the orange ones in and I figured I would work the black stitches in when I do the house. So that I know if I'm in the right spot, if, if my black stitch is on top of the orange stitch or between the orange stitches, does that make sense? So it does help sometimes to have that point of reference. So this one will get at least 314 more stitches before it goes away. That's, that's going to be a bit. That will probably be the rest of the house and the mirror, the windows. The windows themselves, I already counted. It's 54 stitches to complete the windows in the second house. So I will be started on the third house, the big tall one in the center, by the time I get done with this session. We have to catch up on Big Brother tonight, so I will have time to do that. Okay, Christmas strawberries. I was really excited for this one because I've never stitched a strawberry before. There are what, six of them in here, and they only use two colors. It is um, 319 and 3777. I said in my last video that I was going to work on the striped one to see if I could get a finish. I did not, I got 500 stitches exactly, and I did not get a finish, but look at how close. Look at how close. I am almost 50% done. Because once you get to the, the widest part of the strawberry, then obviously it's going to start to get smaller and smaller again. So I think, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, I'm almost to the widest point. Very close. Two threads, three threads, and I'm at the widest point. So I will start working on this um, probably tomorrow. I don't know if I can get another 300. I mean, sometimes I can, but some, you know, I don't know. So I might start, start this tomorrow and we'll maybe have a finish on the strawberry. Okay. I just noticed that I'm putting these in the bin backwards, but that's all right. All right, next, next is Nevermore. Ooh, book 196. And I decided to start with the small urn. I got 515 stitches. And again, Here's my fabric, here's my small. So I'm almost to the top of the, I just have, I just have enough. Well, I think that's all I have in here. I must have stolen the other piece for something else already. So I 
basically have the bottom of the urn done. I need to put the little topper on it. I hope you can see that. I have to put the topper and the little vines and then the date at the top. So, I mean, I did not pre-count. I did not, I did on one other project, not this one. I did not pre-count, but I'm sure I can get this finished in the next session and then I will move on to the next small. Just because I, I did one, so I'll do the other one. So that's pretty cool. I will have a couple of small finishes during this event that I created for myself. And if you want to stitch along, you can as well. I am using the hashtag A Prairie Schooler September on Instagram. Okay, Autumn Leaves is the next one. I got 520 stitches. This one's in a sheet protector inside out. See, if I put it in a sheet protector, then I don't have to keep flipping back and forth, back and forth, but then I can't show you the, the pattern. So Autumn Leaves, again, the bottom, the bottom is full coverage. Um, and I started on the big one. One great thing about coffee tea dyeing your own fabric is it smells really great when you're stitching with it. it smells so great. And this is uh, 520 stitches. I don't have all of the floss colors in the bottom to the right of the cat are um, the numbers one through nine and then zero. And I don't have all of the floss colors for those. And I didn't, I wasn't sure if I wanted to stitch all of the background color and then come back and fill in the numbers or not or kind of stitch them as I go I don't know I don't know what I was thinking the last time that I stitched on this so I knew that I had the color for the barn or the house or whatever that is the house right there so I skipped over I did all of the fence and then I skipped over and did that because I knew that I had the colors for that and I so on this session I should be able to work on the house and get that done. Maybe work a little bit on the background so I'm not leaving it all to the end. But 520 stitches. So that's pretty exciting. Okay. And then we are at Halloweenies. Uh, 505 stitches the first session. This one's also in backwards, so bear with me. Halloweenies, 505 stitches, and I started on, which one did I start? I don't remember. Oh, the, the one with the crow. Wait, yes. This one right here, the one with the crow and the pumpkin and the moon. I'm just looking because, okay. Because I, this is the one that I calculated that I have 114 stitches left on it. So the next session, when I finally get down to project number nine, I will be able to finish this one and move on to the next one. And we have several days until we get here. So if anyone wants to vote on, you don't have to if you don't want to, but if you have an opinion on which one I should work on next, let's see, there's um, a witch, a house, a ghost, another house, um, a cat, there's two witches, two in two houses, a ghost and this um, pumpkin head guy. So I don't know if you have a preference in which one I should start. They're all pretty good stitching, so I should be able to get good progress. The pumpkin head guy is pretty intense. He's got a lot of stitches, but I should be able to at least do his body in one session. Oh, and on this one, I'm actually, I don't know if you can tell on camera, 
and with the lighting that I have today, but as you can see, I'm downstairs. Michigan is still really warm for September. During the day, it's, um, this week it's uh, mid to low 80s, low to mid 80s. And so of course upstairs, it's really warm. So um, I'm using 3371 on this one. And apologies, apologies to Pam Bird at the Prairie Schooler for using 310 because the 3371 on this particular color of fabric just looks so cool. I don't, like I said, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but in person, it just gives it a little something. It gives it a little bit of something. Not that I changed my mind on any of the rest of them as I went along. I stuck with the 310 just because the store didn't have enough 3371 to go around. Okay, this was a whip, a witching hour. I have 525 stitches finished and I'm working on the big piece. The smalls, the, the Halloween, <sighs> sounds like Darth Vader back here. I see he's uh, sprawled out along the whole couch and is taking up my spot too, can you see? That's my spot. Anywho, this one shouldn't take any time at all. The witch is a little bit more intense, but that should be completed within two sessions, 500 each. So there is that. Oh, I should probably show you my progress. Here, I'm packing my bag back up. All right, there was a lot of like little fiddly bits that didn't get done yet. So I tried to focus on those so that way the bottom portion of the chart was complete. So I think, I think the bottom half of the chart from like the center line down is complete now. So, I mean, I don't know if I'll be able to remember. I think I had a little bit of the, no, I think I had the tree done already, but he didn't have his pumpkin. So I gave him his pumpkin. And then there's a star. I put in a star. I put in some bats and I actually put one of the bats in the wrong spot and then started the alphabet based off of that bat. So I had to take it out and redo it. I only count the stitches that are permanent. So if I have to rip stitches out, they come off of the count and then go back on the count when they're put in the right spot. And then I obviously I started the alphabet in two different spots and then started the witch. And the reason why I did that is because it's, there is more stitching here. And I think I was probably getting tired and I didn't wanna to try to do every single alf, uh, letter in the alphabet to get the 500 stitches this go around because I already did little fiddly bits like the pumpkin and the, and the star and the bats and I had to tear the bat out, put the S in, had to tear the S out, you know? So I kind of was like, okay, I just wanna get up to the witch so I can put in some solid stitches. So the next time I work on this, I will go back and forth one strand into the witch, one strand into the alphabet and go back and forth until I get the alphabet done. And then, and then as you can see, if the alphabet is complete, yes, those are some big solid portions, the, the two moons and the three witches and there's two more bats and a cat, but I find that the big blocks of stitches sometimes go faster because counting out a letter, while they have very minimal stitches to them, counting and making sure that they're all in the right place and if you have to start them, if I can carry my thread just one stitch over, I will continue on to the next letter. But if I can't, then I cut my thread and I start again. So that all takes time. So even though there's lots of stitches up there on the top section, I'm getting there. And like I said, those smalls aren't gonna take me long at all. So this project could be off of my whip list by the end of the year. We'll see. Well, I mean, I'm not going to be able to get as many sessions in this month on this project to complete all of it plus the two smalls, but there's three more months after September. So we'll see. Okay, after that, was autumn samplers 
that is the one that I did not have the fabric dyed for. So that one I'm just going to leave for a different time. Then we went into Hocus Pocus. 513 stitches into Hocus Pocus. I thought I was going to start with the small, the crystal ball, this one, just because it was pretty solid and I could get a lot done in 500 stitches. But I found that I didn't have any more of the orange color, this orange um, 3826. I didn't have any more. So I just started with what I had, which is the black in the big one. I could have probably done the other small, but I wanted to also try to like some projects start the big piece and some projects start the small piece and Halloweenies and Heads Up are all smalls. So I just tried to, to mix it up a little so I wasn't doing the same thing over and over. You know, you don't want to do all of the smalls and then have all of the big ones left. I guess you would probably want to do it the other way, have, you know, get all the big ones done and save all the smalls for last because those are fast anyways. But also if I start some of the smalls and get some done, then I have some finishes this month, right? Right? That's my thought process anyways. That's how I decided. I, I didn't like make sure, you know, to count, make sure I had it even or anything, but you know, I just kind of try to make it even. So again, 513 stitches. I think I put one or two strands up on each side of the border and then I started working on that crow. The crow and the, yeah, the, the key, if you can see it there in the small. I mean, there's a lot left, but I wonder, because I probably won't put any more into the border the, the next go round. I'll focus on the crow, but if I get the crow done, then I'll take the border up and then I'll start working on the cat. The cat's kind of cool. So, 513 stitches. Next up is a prairie year. This one is a whip. I had started some of these. Uh, I had to finish the watermelon. And then I moved on to October's because I already had September the September block done. So I moved on to October, the pumpkin. And I was an adult and finished the uh, watermelon. And I think there was only 180 stitches left in the watermelon before I moved on. So there's that, I'm a finish, a finish. And then I started the pumpkin. And I actually got some pretty great progress on for only having 320-ish stitches. Let's see, I, I put 523, so about five, 340 stitches I put on this pumpkin. It probably doesn't look like it, but that's what the math says. So, I mean, let's see. With 500 stitches on the next session, I don't know if I'll get it done because the pumpkin, the center section of the pumpkin is pretty wide, but I should be able to get pretty good progress. And then the next time I work on this, whether it be in September or October, I should have that pumpkin done. And that would be, let's see, let's count. Let's count, shall we, how many squares I got done so far. So I did July, August, September, November, and December. So one, two, three, four, five. So the pumpkin would be six. I'll be halfway done with prairie, uh, a prairie year, which is book 13. So I do have some older ones, and I have some of the new, the new, but the the last ones that she released since she is she's only doing this um santa's okay another whip stars and stripes uh if you remember i was working on the ship 
talk about fiddly bits to finish. I thought it was all done and I was scanning it, comparing to the chart and I missed a whole row of stitches on one of the sails. So the presidents are done. The whale is done except for the back stitching. I'm leaving to last and I was working on the ship, 1776. I finished it. So, so far I have two and I, even though the project isn't finished, I do count each small as a finish. I get super excited just because there's a lot of stitches in here. So I can't remember how many stitches I had to put into the ship chart in order to get it done before I could start the next one, but I did get it done. So here is the whale and the ship. And like I said, it says C, C2 shining C in the blue water underneath the whale, but I'll put that in when I'm all done. Okay, so then, then somewhere, here we go, my, my blue. I bought lots of floss for these because I did not know how much it was going to take. So I have floss everywhere. Okay, so that was those. And then what I did was start the bell, the Liberty Bell. So again, I started with the blue and I filled in, filled in the white dots for the stars. And then I went up the side and then I started the bell. Because then next time the this this border goes all the way around it's a little fiddly just because you put in so much of one color then go to the other and i want to try to put in the white because it's next to red to me it's really important to put white stitches in when you're next to red or next to black so you don't pull up the fluff i did that uh i did it the opposite way on my mario map i put in the black and then put in the white and my white stitches kind of look dirty so um but next time I'll focus on the bell just so that way I can just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and there's less counting. Less fiddly bits as I call them. So this is this is the ivory. I don't know if you can tell the difference between some that I've showed you already and then this, but this is the ivory. I ended up getting a whole bunch of it and that's what I use to coffee and tea dye this go round because it's so yellow that it's not good for all projects but it is good to coffee and tea dye. And that's just my opinion. Um, in, a, in Stars and Stripes, I put 505 stitches. This one is Adam Names the Creatures. I don't have a lot of floss colors for this chart, so it was a little tricky for me to get started. Um, before I get down to this one, I might have to pick up a couple more colors just to make sure that I can continue stitching. So I don't like to count too far. Because even though I, I think I can count, if you're a stitcher or a crocheter or a knitter, you, I'm sure that you have found that counting is hard. So I started with the border, of course, because it gives you a point of reference and somewhere to work toward. Um, and then what you can do is with this one, as I'll show you, I have, let's see, 510 stitches. But see how some of them are in and some of them are out. You can count them up. And so I was able to start on the lion and I was working on the hippo. So, you know, the hippo I've got good progress on. But I probably could finish the hippo and the, and the lion and have another 500 stitches and and we'll go from there but i think i i want to see if i can get some more floss colors just so you know maybe one or two that are around because the flowers and the camel the chicken let's just make sure that i have enough so that way i can i don't stall out on it just because i don't have enough floss because that would not be that would be unfortunate wouldn't it Okay, this one is, I have both charts in here. It's country, I was saying it wrong last time. I was calling it country fair one and country fair two, it's no, it's county. County fair one and two. So let's see, I did 
for these ones, I did do a random number generator to figure out which one I was going to start in each one because they're all pretty much the same except for the animals different. So, let's see. These are extra pieces. I just have to find them because, of course, there's eight pieces of fabric in here. Okay, this is County Fair number one. And let's see. On this one, we have rooster, cow, goat, and pig. And... The number generator told me to start with the rooster. Yeah, yeah. Rooster. So, the checkerboard down on the bottom. It's not annoying. I can do the first, the first top two, the way that I stitch, the top two rows. Um, continuously and then go back in and do the bottom two or the bottom row so I put in a border right started my checkerboard and when I got the checkerboard done then I put in the next border and started his feet I hope that I was I my ankle was bad so I hope you saw that I started with the borders then put in the checkerboard and then put in his feet and now that the checkerboard is done I can get a scooting on whatever I have colors for and I temporarily lost the, the gray color and they all use the same colors. So you can see he's brown and gray. I had temporarily lost the gray color. It was stuck in between two pieces of fabric. Heavens. So I, I got that figured out by the time I got to county fair number two. So Number one, I got 523 stitches. Number two, I got 524 stitches. Um, I think because, I, I'm gonna tell you why I think that is. The, the border color on number one, this border color was, I got from a yard sale or something. And it was like a bobbin or a skein that had already been used a little bit while I still cut it in eight equal pieces. And so they were a little bit shorter. So then when I use, stitched on this, the borders aren't, um, I, I just didn't get enough, as many stitches in as I did with the other color. That's all, that's all, okay. The random number generator chose the sheep. So this one has horse, hen, rabbit, and sheep. And it chose the sheep. And I know that the pictures on here are fairly dark. They are book one and book two, that happens. Um, and then it's kind of dark in here, but this is the best spot for me right now because it's just too hot upstairs. Okay, so again on this one, I got almost all the checkerboard done and I'll show you and tell you what I mean or why I didn't get it all done. So the checkerboard and I did the same thing with this one. I started with the borders and did the checkerboard and then went up and did a little bit. Uh, I got the back legs done. So what happened is when I started the bottom row of checks, I started one square too far to the left. So I just have to grab a piece of floss and do those nine stitches. That's all. Oops. No biggie. I kind of like the colors in, the, in these two. They're kind of like, I don't know, this... These colors remind me of like a 1950s diner. I don't, I don't know why. It's, it's just me. Um, you can look up the colors and tell me what you think. Okay, I'll tell you what they are. It is uh, for the border, and there is actually a border, an outside border, all the way around in 3021, and I didn't have that color. You think that I would, but I didn't. So the border on the sheep is. 355 and the checkerboard is 501 so you tell me what you think on that okay so that's county fair one and two and for a total of 1047 stitches on the two of these and that's going to be fun because they're not super super big as you can see i got the full width of those done so they're not large so, I mean, I have lots and lots of projects, but I think that, you know, if I sat down and stitched on it for a week, I could, I could do some damage on those. Okay, heads up. 
I did 521 stitches. This one, the dog is kicking me. I don't know if you can see this, but he's stretching his legs and he's pushing on my back. Can you stop? He has no sense of personal space because he wants all of the space, whether it belongs to you or not. Anyway, sorry. Um, heads up, there's a lot to choose from here. And I've realized that there's two small, um, well, there's this ornament here, but then there's a bonus one. And I can't show you because it's not stitched. Usually she stitches, well, it is stitched, but it's shown on the, here, let me see if I can cover up the chart. I'm gonna take all my pieces of fabric. This is the bonus. So there's three, six, nine, and there's technically 10 little charts on this one. I started with, what did I start with? I don't know, let's find it. Ah, it's inside. Oh, the witch. I started with the witch, look at how much I got done. This is 521 stitches, and I would say that I'm I'm a good two-thirds to three-quarters of the way done. I have to finish her hair and finish her face and then put on her hat, and I mean, boom. Done. So definitely in the next session, I'll have this done. And I did my calculations on having the 19 full projects to do, and I thought that I could get through two and a half of them. If I was really zooming, I thought I could get through two and a half cycles. So I work on everything twice and then the first half of the list I would work on a third time. So this I got done in one evening after I already finished the other one and then I got started on the second, There was a third project. Uh, so if I can get to this one more time, at least one more time, I know that I'll have this one done. And then my, I don't know, I like the pumpkin, the jack-o'-lantern. But the uh oh in the center is all one color and I there's not a lot of stitches and I bet I could get that done quickly. It's a, It looks to be smaller than the other ones, just like this bonus on the back. It's 35 by 31. I think, 35 by 31. They're all 35 by 31. I don't know, it just looks smaller to me, but there's not a lot of stitches. I say that now, we always say that, don't we? So I have all, all of the pieces here ready to go, and I'll get to that shortly. All right, just one more. Last one is harvest time. I got exactly 500 stitches on this one. Oh, I have to take it out of the sheet protector and turn it around. I should try to remember to do that when I'm done stitching on it for the session. Okay, I started on the top one, the one with the houses, like the little village on the top. Harvest time. And this one, I don't have a lot of colors either. And then here's another thing. I know it's gonna look really strange when I show this to you. Okay, this is my progress, 500 stitches. So I did my border. There's actually two colors of border on this. So I started with the red and then I put in the brown, started with the brown. But when I did the red, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna just go up to the top corner, top right corner. I was having so much trouble counting it, and I counted it and counted it and counted it. There's only 75 stitches, guys. Only 75 stitches. And I could not, so I'm like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch straight up, if I can, if I have the color, stitch straight up, and then count from there, and I got it. I had it right, I got my 75 stitches and turned the corner. So now when I pick this back up on the second sitting, on the second session, I will start to fill in the house and the tree with whatever colors I have and then move up and out, just like I do with all the rest of them. Okay.
that's fun. I am really having a lot of fun with this. And I'm gonna continue on through the end of the month. I will be back in about two weeks to give you a recap and show you my progress. And as always, I hope that in this video, you saw something to inspire you to pick up a languishing whip or to try something new or to have a little bit of fun like I am. And until next time, have a great week. Bye.